three, two, one, fire. Eurofighter Typhoon is one of the safest fighter planes in the world, but in case you need to eject, it all comes down to one special asset, the ejection seat. Today we open the factory gates to the mother of all ejection seats, the Martin Baker company in England. We take a look on how the seats are produced, how they function and what the test engineers do to ensure that the seats work within milliseconds in case of emergency. So join me now, this is the Fighter Show with Flo. So guys, today it's all about ejection seats and we are here at the famous Martin Baker company. Next to me, Steve, he's working here since the last 30 years. Hi Steve, how are you doing? Welcome to Martin Baker, Flo. Uh, now Steve, Martin Baker producing ejection seats since almost 100 years, is that correct? Well, the company has existed for 90 years, but we've been continuously developing ejection seats for the last 79 years. And you get a pretty well track record in saving lives. We have saved the lives of 7,720 aircrew to date. We've got them here, the ejection seats, and let's talk a bit more about it. They all look a bit like complicated seats with safety belts. What makes an ejection seat an ejection seat? Well, the ejection seat is really complex, so it's not just a chair. It also has a ballistic system because we have to get you out of the cockpit uh, very, very quickly. Uh, we have electronics within the seat to determine the time to deploy the parachute. And in here, we have a very large parachute to, uh, to get you down to the ground. So that's directly behind your, your hat, right? Down behind the head pad. And what you are sitting on, you're also sitting on a, what we call a survival aids container. And all your survival aids are actually contained within this container. Okay, that's directly below the, the cushion where the, the pilot is sitting. So after ejection, the survival aids container will drop. Uh, and you will use the survival aids post ejection. Now let's talk about exactly that sequence because this is the magic handle here uh, in, in yellow and black. If you pull that, you are launching the sequence to eject. What's happening after I pull that? Absolutely, this is uh, no return. When I pull that handle, <laughs> the initiation system will begin and that begins a pyrotechnic train. Uh, so you are retracted back into the seat in the posture for ejection and then the seat will begin to move up the rails. Uh, as the seat begins to move up the rails, the electronics will begin, and they begin the sensing of the outside environment. The electronics have worked out what is the optimum time to deploy the parachute and separate you from the seat. And then after you've inflated the parachute, you'll be descending and four seconds later the survival aids container will drop and the survival aids container yourself and the parachute will come down uh, as an assembly onto land or into the sea. But that really means uh, the pilot is sitting on a high-tech rocket, right? It is. It's a very large rocket motor that you're sitting on. <laughs> Holy. Now, we've got here the original uh, Mark 16A Eurofighter Typhoon seat. What's special about that ejection seat? The 16A was, was very um, special when it came into service. Uh, it was the first Mark 16, so it had a twin ejection gun. And what that meant for us is we were able to meet the latest physiological requirements of the day. But also we were able to integrate a helmet mounted display system, a very advanced life support system, as well as liquid cooling. When we talk about the Typhoon as an aircraft, we all know that it will fly well beyond the 2060s, which is quite some time to go now. Any plans uh, regarding the seat? Because, I mean, we're talking about air upgrading the aircraft. Absolutely. So next to me here, this is the next generation uh, Typhoon seat. Oh, wow. So that's a prototype, right? This is a prototype that introduces brand new features using the technology that we developed for the F-35. So what you see at the top, which is a different, uh, different image, is really the, our airbags. 
Airbags, what does that mean in terms of ejection? So we use airbags to stabilize the helmet during ejection. Sure. So the head and helmet are not un unconstrained. That means stabilizing the neck in a way than yeah. when you pull it. So the pilot is wearing a very large helmet mounted display and there is a higher risk of injury during ejection. So we, the, we use the airbags to actually hold the, the head and neck during the initial phase of the ejection sequence. Wow, Steve, that's all pretty cool stuff. And you're doing that all here on site, right? So the manufacturing, the parachute packing, you name it. Yes, we've made uh, 869 seats for the 600 Typhoons here, and we should go and take a look. Absolutely. Now, let's go. Let's go. So, Steve, where, where are we now here? We're now in the parachute packing department, and this is unique process to ejection seats. Here we, we take one of the four different types of parachute we have, and we have a special folding technique to make sure when we deploy the parachute, it comes up in a repeatable and controlled manner. And I mean, we see those red things lying on the parachute. Do you pack that into the container or what, what, no, so what's that? These are tools used by the specialists here to actually fold the parachute in a predictable manner such that we can uh, put it into the container. And how do you get a parachute like this with that size into a, a container in, into the seat? Well, we've developed these three ton presses to press the parachute into this container. So that, that's a Typhoon container, right? This is a Typhoon parachute container that looks smaller than the actual volume of a parachute. So we actually have to press the air out of the parachute to get it into this space. And how do you manage that? So once we fold the, the parachute, we put the parachute container under the press to actually squeeze the air out of the, the assembly. So you press with three tons the parachute into that container. How long does it take? Well, it's about 10 hours of pressing, but the whole process from start to finish is about three days. And uh, you can't allow any failure, right? No, it has to be perfect every time. And we also hear that it's, it's quite silent here. There is no noise. Is that because the packers need to focus on the work? They need cool. to concentrate, and this is a low, it has to be a low stress environment. <laughs> So Flo, we are here on our main manufacturing shop floor and we're just coming up to the machine shop. Well, it looks a bit like they have a metal fraction is working yep. here, right? <laughs> Hi, Hi, I'm Flo. How are you doing? Good, thanks. You. Um, what do you have here in your hand? So this is the front cross beam for the seat bucket for the Typhoon. So that's really in, in the Typhoon seat? It really is in the Typhoon. Um, it's manufactured from billet aluminium, so a solid block of metal, and it's manufactured on our uh, four axis uh, CNC machines, so you have an X, Y, Z and a B axis, which allows it to turn. So that, that piece comes out of a, of a real brick of aluminium? A real brick of aluminium, just about the same size as this. Can I, can I lift yes, that? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's a lightweight thing. It is very light. Well, Steve, one last question before we are heading off to the test facilities of Martin Baker. You mentioned something off camera which really shocked me. Um, we all know the Top Gun movies, and you are of the opinion that Goose in Top Gun 1, when he's ejecting his F-14, is not dying at all. He can't be dead. He's still alive. Well, the, the, the F-14A was fitted with a cast acrylic canopy, and the seat's fitted with breakers. So the seat can go through canopy in the backup mode. So for me, Goose is alive. That means that is the biggest lie of, uh, well, aviation movies, right? Very sensationalist in the movie, absolutely. <laughs> but I'm relieved. Friends, Goose is alive. Thank you, Steve, for this. Here is your official fight show patch. Many okay. thanks. And we head further on to the Martin Baker test facilities. This is the fight show with Flo. So guys, we are here at Chalgrove Airfield, the test facility of Martin Baker. And you know the expression that this is not rocket science. This here definitely is rocket science because in a couple of minutes, we're gonna fire a real rocket motor that is normally strapped beneath a Martin Baker ejection seat. And before that, I'm talking to Dan, the godfather of rocket motors here at Martin Baker. Hi Dan, how are you doing? You. Not bad, thank you. So you've got a little setup for us here. What do we see? Dan? Yeah, so we start off in the build process. We lay out the hardware on the table. We put some adhesive on the threads, we fit the end caps, and then we get to this setting fixture. 
So the certain fixture dictates the length and the orientation of the nozzles. Now we've got a full mo uh, fully assembled motor with the igniter cartridge in there. What you've got inside here is approximately 15,000 horsepower of thrust. <laughs> That's incredible. Yep, and that will take the pilot in his seat from the, uh, from the aircraft to 100 metres above in just 0.67 of a second with 0 to 100 kilometres an hour of 0.17. This is incredible, Dan. This is incredible. In, from zero to 100 in 0 0.17 seconds. And I think now we are ready to fire our motor. Thank you very much for the information, Dan. This is your fighter ship patch. Thank you. And let's go firing now. So guys, we are now outside of the test bunker. Inside there is Chris with the rocket motor and in a couple of seconds, he will fire it. And we are waiting now for the big bang. This was our rocket motor blown away by Chris. And this is the fight show with Flo. So it looks a bit like as if we were at the doctor's because we got an x-ray of a rocket motor here behind us. Dale, what is it all about? Here, we're checking for the correct assembly, make sure everything's in place. It's the final quality check before our rocket motors go to customer. And we need to make sure that they're working perfectly when they arrive. So speaking with the doctor's language, you hope that the rocket motor is not sick, right? We definitely hope it's not sick and we hope it's in perfect condition and perfect health when it arrives. So after firing the rocket motor, we are now at the seat test department together with Nigel. Hi Nigel. Hello. And Nick. Hi Nick. Hello there. Now Nick, what is the seat test department doing? Well, we're doing ejection testing, component and subsystem testing. Sounds interesting. And what we see here, Nigel, is a couple of mannequins. Years ago, I, I saw films where Martin Baker was testing their seats with real human beings. Why don't you do that anymore now? OK, many years ago, we used to use real people in the testing system. But now we use crash test dummies uh, because we want data. And data is really important to analyse to check the performance of the seat. And we all know these kind of uh, mannequins from the automotive industry. Are they the same or uh, do you use different types of mannequins? Uh, these are loosely based on the automotive crash test dummies, but these are slightly modified with stronger joints in various places and a different shaped head. So they can accommodate the pilot's helmet. Nigel, if I were you, I would worry most about losing my data when I'm blowing up uh, the whole mannequin with, with the seat yeah. uh, and you want to have the data. Uh, what do you do or how do you secure uh, the fact that you have the data then afterwards? So our data acquisition system, which is this system. So that's, that's where you store the data, This right? is the memory and all the transducers, some of the transducers in there, is deep in the chest cavity okay deep in there and it's protected by the rib cage and the flesh that will wrap around it and protect it right you mean you mean plastic flesh right yes that's correct <laughs> yeah. okay no real one not real uh, and, and keep fingers crossed that everything goes right that's correct what we see here also is two different sizes of mannequins i know that you get a couple more on stock why are you testing with different sizes okay the small and the large this represents the smallest pilots and actual dimensions and this represents the largest dimensions of the largest pilot so that checks the full range of pilots in our seat so we get the full data available for each pilot that means a martin baker seat needs to fit a 50 kilogram female pilot same as a 110 kilo male pilot right exactly 
Now, once we got the mannequin equipped with all the technology, we enter Nick's business. Nick, what's happening then afterwards? Well, once the instrumentation has all been installed and the mannequin's built up, um, it's important that we then dress it in the appropriate clothing uh, for the test uh, that the customer would want. Um, at the same time we're doing that, we're also preparing the ejection seat by fitting cartridges and we're fitting instrumentation so that we can monitor systems within the seat. But that means there is uh, instruments and, and sensors in the mannequin itself and also in the seat, right? That's correct, yes, and we connect through to one or the other and then we're storing all of that data within the mannequin. Nick, now let's imagine we want to do one of those famous rail tests. Yeah. What would happen as the next step? Well, after we've uh, checked everything on the seat, um, we would then take the seat and install it into the test fuselage. And at the same time, we're, uh, we've been preparing rockets for the propulsion. And at a three, two, one, somebody's pressing the button and off you go. Yeah, and then it's three, two, one, fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let the thunder roll. Um, how many tests like that did you do on Typhoon? On Typhoon, we did, uh, I worked on about 70 of those uh, full ejection tests. And in your whole career? In, my, about? Ho in my whole career, approximately 4,000 tests. <laughs> well, that, that's quite huge, quite something. So you're really experienced in shooting seats up in the air and you're still enjoying that, right? Yes, yes, it's a thrill every day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nick. That concludes our fight show here from Martin Baker. Thank you very much. This is the official fight show patch for you, Nick. Thank, Thank you. you. Nigel, that's Thank for you. you. And I dare say this was so far the most explosive day in the history of the fight show. Take care, see you soon, and may the Air Force be with you.